The disappearance of Mother Nicola Bully has prompted more questions than answers. And now the police themselves are facing serious questions regarding disclosures that they put out there, along with their overall handling of the case. This got us wondering what's actually going on. And we ended up finding something that I don't think anyone else has really reported on, which is the company that Nicola and her husband Paul had and the serious troubles it was facing. We need to talk about this. Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor. And yes, we have an exclusive here because, again, I haven't seen this out anywhere else. And this is all public information. But I do want to disclaim before we even start this. Look, we're speculating. We're go I'm not an accountant. So please don't quote me as something definitive here. The family has asked us to stop speculating. However, I think healthy speculation done, you know, carefully is good. Look, that's what happened in the Gabby Patillo case. If it wasn't for all of us pushing this out there and then Red, White, and Bethune finding that footage, I don't think the police would have ever found her body. That's my thought. So I, I do think it's important that we look at things because the police don't seem to be looking at certain areas. And so, yes, they've already sort of bumbled this case. They labeled this woman crazy. Oh, the crazy woman with her high risk alcohol and menopause issues that it's put a lot of people and it made them angry, myself included. And so a lot of us are questioning the whole thing. And, and now the family's trying to tell us not to, but at the same time, the family's putting out questions, basically pleading to Nicola, please come home. We'll forgive you type of language that puts a million red flags up for me. I don't know about you, but not typically mom, come home. We forgive you. We, we will be okay with it. It just means that something else is going on here. So what could be going on? We've speculated endlessly, but I got to give props to Steph, the alternate who looked up Nicola and her husband, Paul's business. Now, all of this is public information that I've found through uh, the government.uk uh, and the company that they have is called PNN Engineering Design Limited. Now, if you go here, I, again, please, I, I preface again, I am not an accountant. I'm trying my best. I've spoken to people to go through this and perhaps others will be able to break it down more thoroughly now that we've put it out there. Again, but be, let's be respectful here because this doesn't confirm anything, but it does ask a lot more questions that I think could be rel related in this topic, including the fact that their accounts are overdue. Now, what's this mean? They, According to this, they haven't even filed their reports for 2022. Uh, their statements are long overdue for the past year. And the statements that they have put out there, uh, which as we go here, we can see here, you look up, uh, it's in such bad state, uh, you know, state of things that the register of companies gives, gave them notice that unless cause is shown to be the contrary, the company will be struck off the register and dissolved not less than two months from the date shown above, which is July 2nd, 2023. Upon the company's dissolution, all property and rights vested in or held in trust for the company are deemed to be bonafide, which basically will belong to the crown or will go to the, to the state. Uh, that's not good. Now I asked Steph about this. She's like, no, this isn't good. This is a bad thing that your company's in not a good shape. Now, again, we've gone through and we were able to get company the, the company report. Uh, this is information you can purchase, but it's public information. And we got it through this company, Pomoda. And yes, as you go through it, it's very clear. It's seemingly to me, at least to me, again, allegedly, I want to put that speculation up again one more time. I am speculating here, which the family told us not to do, but I'm still doing it because something seems off here. And when you go to the balance sheet and you look at the assets, et cetera, and you scroll down to even just the profits and loss, their gross profits, uh, at the end of the day, uh, they're... they're <laughs> They're making way less than they're earning, okay? Now, I want to be very careful here because, again, I, I don't want to I, – I, I'm not an accountant, but their assets match their liability. So that means the whole company seems to be leveraging – leveraged on their debt. Seems also very excessive based on the numbers that we can see here that were provided uh, on these company reports, which Steph alerted me in the UK they are obligated to provide. Um, and so as you go through here, you can see their operating profit is nothing. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean they're, they were in debt. There, there are other things that they could have done as a business to try to, like, you know, justify these things. But their employee costs, you go through these numbers, which I will increase here. You can see, uh, look, the bottom line is it doesn't look good. And as you scroll through more of this information, as you can get through these filings, um, uh, one more thing I wanted to show here, their sales uh, did not do on what is what is this company? I was repair and maintenance of aircraft and spacecraft is what this company was. And when you go through and look at their sales, 
Uh, it's not good. Sales for the total amount of money uh, from the sales goods uh, was was far lower than the industry average. Now, again, it do, you know that doesn't mean it's you know debt, et cetera, but we're at four hundred seventy five thousand over nine million, which is the average. So it's doing far less than usual. Um, now, the saying the profit the profitability of their production is average. But the operations profitable is really, really, really low, um, and uh, they're they only have two employees, which I assume are you know Paul and Nicola. And uh, as you scroll, there's one more part. Sorry, I'm getting here <coughs> through their cash management, their debt level here, and a rate has a ratio of liabilities to total assets of 99.5 percent, which is higher level of debt than the average, which is 52 percent. Um, so hugely, you know, high average of debt level. Again, all this stuff points to the fact that, yeah, it does seem like well, when it gives sort of a rating here, I think at the top, which is full disclosure. Um, is it here? I think it's here. The debt level. Uh, yeah, here it is. It, it's like high risk, moderate risk. They're like right here in like this yellow orange zone in most of the reporting that's happening here, which is the moderate to high risk. So it's not like they're in high, high, high risk, but they're in, you know, very moderate risk. Now, if you go to the credit report, the public credit report, as we scroll through here and look at things, and again, it's hard to digest all of it because I'm again I'm not an accountant, but I can I, I know enough here. Sorry, scrolling, scrolling. The important part here we go. The balance sheet. Again, their assets are the same. If they're not exact, but as much as their liabilities are, so they're constantly breaking even here, uh, and that's not good. That's not a good look uh, for the business. That is right. Now, look, this doesn't deem that they're failure. Like this, what I'm trying to show you with all this data, when you look at the fact that, yes, the company was about to be struck off, when you look at their liabilities are the same as their profit, all this information to me points me to the direction of a speculation. Something wasn't going well financially with this family, and I do think that's incredibly relevant. Now, we've talked about the, the police have already volunteered this, which I don't think anyone needed to know because this wasn't public information. Their finances and their company is, uh, this wasn't, but that coupled with the apparent, you know, uh, high risk she had with her menopause and alcohol issues, whatever that, how justified that is. It puts me into the direction of a few theories. Now, to be clear, I'm absolutely speculating here. This is not necessarily what happened. I have no proof that this happened, but it's hard to not speculate on a few options of well, what does this mean if her company was indeed and not in good shape. My head spins to a few objects, and I'm curious what your thoughts are down below. One, right? One, uh, she's trying to do something here to uh, make money again. Now, she, I don't have proof of her life insurance plan, but there are uh, stories out there where people have, you know, tricked the insurance to, you know, make a lot of money. In fact, here was one that happened. This story is wild. Death, fraud, and canoes, how a mind-blowing insurance scam became an ITV drama. Uh, he pretended to die at sea and spent years in a secret room in his house while his sons mourned as the thief, his wife, and the canoe beginnings the caper on TV. It's anyway, so th this was this was a real case. This man faked his death, got the insurance money, and then head off so they could pay it. So again, the reason I bring this up is because it's important you see here. Sorry, one other thing I want to make sure you notice here. While the, the company was owned 50-50, it does look here that uh, when you look, sorry, some of this stuff, here we go. When you look at the shares, 50-50, Paul and Nicola, but he is listed as the director. So there's only one director listed, which is Paul. And again, from the shareholder state, you have to publicly show this, they share the you know shareholding. So one theory, again, big theory, I know they've cleared the husband, they've said the husband has an alibi, all this stuff. There is a theory here where it's like, well, does he have an invested motive to get the full sh stake of shares as well as any potential life insurance policy. Now you, one could immediately say that makes him evil. Maybe not. The other version of this could be, well, what if she decided to do this on her own? What if she was so distraught point signs are sort of pointing to that. The financial motive adds to what I think is more likely than the husband necessarily doing that either them working together to do it or uh, Nicola being so distraught that she thought, well, maybe I can cash in this insurance plan and let and just help my family get away, you know, get something. Whether she actually decided to unalive herself or decided to go off and just sort of disappear and hope that that would help. 
Uh, maybe there was a plan again, where my head goes more realistically than even just vilifying the husband to say he's doing this, which I don't know proof on. And the family and everyone says, no, 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 that wouldn't be possible to me. It's more likely that they would have maybe done this together in order to help their finances. Or she just did it on a moment of just losing it. Think I got to do something. I don't know what to do. We're in such trouble. I'm just walking away. And that theory has been floated around by a lot, but when you add the finance, when you add this threat of the whole company getting struck off, the stress and pressure that could bring, it just makes that a little bit more believable to me. And the question is, well, did she do that and actually unalive herself? Did she attempt to leave and think, well, maybe we could just do some sort of insurance scam and no one will really be the wiser. No one's going to really pay attention. Who am I? Now, suddenly this case is everywhere and everyone's freaking out, including Nicola, like, oh, crap, what do I do? That would make a lot more sense to a family putting out messages saying, please come home. We'll work this out. We'll figure it out. Right. When I hear that theory, the pieces fall in a little bit more to go. Is that what actually happened? Does this give more of a motive to explain why she may have walked off on her kids? Because I think for a lot of us, that's the big question. Why could any mother do this to her kids? Well, if she feels so worried that there's the finances are going to be so bad, that, yeah, sometimes that can happen. That coupled with whatever medication or issues that were happening at the same time could be an excuse for one to walk off and either do something unthinkable, which I hope and pray didn't happen, or, hey, I'm going to see if we can get the insurance money and uh, maybe that'll help my family and they'll be better off and I'm going to go live in a cabin somewhere. Oh, crap, I didn't think this is going to be such national news. Now what? Again, going back to the family's own comments, which were, please, we forgive you. Uh, please, we just want you to come home. Yada, yada, yada. That's just such weird stuff. If I was, if I was, you know, saying this, I know it's unfair to put myself in because I'm not in their shoes, but still, if I was, my loved ones were missing, you'd think I'd be more like, please, whoever took you come home or I pray you're still out there type of language, not weirdly like it's okay. Uh, it's just, it's just odd. Uh, those, those comments uh, and you know how she can come home and it's okay. That type of comment <laughs> rings the bells of red flags to me. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think this adds to it? Uh, do you think this is liable? Is there an accountant out there that wants to join us on a live stream to really break this down? Please reach out to us. You can reach out to me uh, on uh, my name's not there, but there it is. I'll put it up here. Look me up on social media. If there's an expert out there that wants to help, it's Andy Signor at Andy Signor on Twitter, Instagram, or at Popcorn Planet. I'll keep an eye out. Steph and I will keep an eye out because I would love to get an expert to help us. Did we find something here? Is this actually something that could potentially not be put out by the police for a reason? Uh, is there more to this case? What do you guys think? And if you haven't yet watched this case, I'm going to put the, uh, to do the, the first video that sums up where we are at the end of this video, which you can watch before we get there though, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for all alerts, smash that like button too, and leave a comment down below on your thoughts on this case, your theories. Again, please let's be responsible here. Speculate responsibly because this is a real family. This is a real case and there's a lot going on. I, however, don't believe the police right now. I don't think they've done a good enough job. And with all the apologies and things that they've put out there, I think we have a right and a reason now to ask more questions. So I'm curious what you think. If you don't know much about this case, you want to recatch up, click that video there on the left. Thank you guys so much for watching. More coming here on Popcorn Planet. Yeah.